All right, since we are back, um, um, next I will just, uh, our first speaker, Professor Graham uh, Del Ritter, and um, uh, I will give a just brief introduction. Uh, Graham will receive his PhD from the uh, Wiesman Institute of Science with Professor Milko uh, van der Boom. Then uh, uh, Graham will move to the Caltech to work with Professor uh, uh, Soto Agabi as a postdoc fellow. Uh, Graham returned to Israel in 2017 as a horror uh, uh, um, as a really fellow to start uh, uh, his intimate career uh, at the Technion uh, Israel Techn Institute of Technology, Haifa, where he's an uh, assistant professor uh, in the uh, Schulich Faculty of Chemistry. During his career, uh, Graham re has received the uh, the really fellowship in 2017 and the Timmy Chemistry Journal Award in 2022. Uh, Graham is also on the early career advisory board uh, of, for the science of synthesis, has been named the 40 under 40 most promising young people by the mark uh, Israel. And Graham received the uh, Timmy Chemistry Journal Award in 2022. Uh, today, uh, his talk will be uh, breaking through barrier in catalysis about uh, best code like in a design. And Graham, we are, we are ready for your lecture. We see your slides perfectly. Excellent, thank you very much, uh, Professor Yu. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. My voice is a little uh, raspy, it happened overnight. So uh, <clears throat> today I like to talk to you uh, a little bit about the, 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 the science we have been doing in the past couple of years and, and specifically we also related to uh, iron chemistry, basically. Um, but before I start, I really want to thank, uh, first of all, my awesome team. I have about four PhD students now and, and two postdocs uh, who have been doing really some wonderful work and some former members as well. Particularly, uh, I, I will be uh, I will be talking about the um, the work of of Subash, who's not MIT. And most of it would not be possible with some of our collaborators, but also the funding, uh, particularly the Ministry of Energy, Israel Science Foundation, also now most recently the ERC, who has been uh, was, is funding our iron-based chemistry. Um, the reason why we got into this uh, into this area is that when when you look at at organic synthesis based or synthetic organic chemistry, you see that the Precious metals have an enormous power for constructing carbon-carbon or carbon-oxygen bonds. I've highlighted a few natural products here. For instance, if you look at shindelectone A, highlighted in red, for instance, the carbon-carbon bond was made by ring-closing metathesis with ruthenium, while palladium was used for cross-coupling and carbon cascade reactions. And I can go on and on on, on, on the power of, 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 of these, these precious metals. But when I started my independent career, I thought, wouldn't it be great that perhaps eventually we could do this chemistry with an earth abundant metal such as iron? And we just recently heard a wonderful talk also highlighting some iron, uh, iron chemistry. And I thought, maybe we can do that, maybe we can do the same, maybe we can do also do ring closing metathesis, cross coupling. Uh, but we're not at a stage yet where we are as efficient as palladium. Basically, we're about you know, 50 years back. So at the start of palladium, this is now more or less where that field of iron is right now. When I started looking into the different types of catalysts, of course, that one can use for earth abundant metals, one quickly realizes that most people use a very conserved platform where um, it's either, uh, it's a pincer type platform where the central donor is either an amine, amide, or a pyridine. And what they have in common is that the majority of those complexes are optimized for metal ligand cooperativity to enable the chemical transformation. So either aromatization, dearomatization, electronic metal ligand cooperativity. And I thought by myself, um, I was interested in the type of carbene chemistry. So would it be possible to create earth abundant metal complexes where the central atom donor in the pincer is not a nitrogen, but is a, is a carbon or a carbene? And, and when, when we looked in the literature a couple of years back, we realized that th there are not too many examples out there. The, the majority focuses really on these, these earth abundant metal achillideans from, from Warren Pierce, Rowan Young, and Vlad Iluch. And, and, and these are, are really difficult to synthesize either via double bond CH, or double CH bond activation or CH bond activation dehydration. Um, by no means it's very easy to synthesize these type of, of, 
of, of, of complexes. So I thought, okay, this would be a nice entry if we if we could if we could get there. Because for most of these complexes that I'm highlighting here, uh, there is no capital liquidity shown or very limited. So our early investigations, not related to this chemistry, focused on redox on innocent scaffolds, you know, where Paul Chirik is also famous for, where you have those pyridine diamines for electron metal ligand cooperativity, and we made a derivative which is based on bipyridine. Uh, when we were busy with these type of, 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 of complexes, we realized if we add now a single carbon atom on, on, on the bipyridine platform, we can go to this kind of redesolium salts that, um, now will set you up to generate a, 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 a carbine. And people have looked at, at, at some of these platforms, specifically Doris Kunz, she, she did really some, some wonderful, uh, you know, wonderful uh, characterization and, and synthesis of these type of complexes, uh, where you can already see that this carbine by no means is, 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 is weak. So it results in relatively electron rich metal complexes. The only thing is missing is, is, is the sidearm and, and, and Professor Yamamoto in Japan generated some rhodium complexes, so we thought that would be a good entry. And, and indeed, um, using such a platform uh, with the diisopropyl phosphine, we were able to synthesize the, the iron dichloride and, and furthermore, by using uh, potassium graphite as reductant, we could generate the iron zero complexes for which we hopefully, um, the ligand provides such uh, a strong ligand field that we'll be able to do two electron chemistry. And I will be talking about that uh, shortly. Um, when we also tried um, <clears throat> different reduction chemistry, so for instance, when we uh, tried a sodium triethyl borohydride, uh, we were hoping, of course, that uh, we would reductively eliminate the hydrogen, but uh, to our surprise, this trans dihydride is, is, is stable, um, and, and we use it for later chemistry also, which will be the second part of the talk. So the question is, really, is that could we use this iron uh, zero dinitrogen complexes to facilitate two electron chemistry, because most of the chemistry for iron, if CH I bond activation or cross-coupling, the majority is either sigma bond metathesis or it's one electron radical chemistry, and there are some really wonderful examples. So can this do two electron chemistry? And the answer is, is, is yes. And this is still an ongoing project. So most of the things that I, that I present now is unpublished work, but we can take our iron zero complex three over here. And if we feed it an aryl iodide, we see clean oxidative addition to, to this intermediate A3, which is this aryl iodide complex, which we have characterized. In this case, we're looking at the, at the aryl aryl kumana cross coupling. Um, and there's basically only one example out there from Nakamura. Uh, which uses iron fluoride. It's, it's a bit of a finicky procedure. So we thought perhaps if we use now an aryl grignard, can we do a transmethylation to create this mixed uh, aryl, uh, diaryl iron species in our iron too? And, um, and indeed, when we, have this, um, when we have this compound and we heat it up in the presence of additional electrophile and magnesium bromide, we see a reductive elimination to create a cross coupled product and we're feeding back to the to the oxidative addition product of the aryl iodide. So at least stepwise, we're demonstrating here a two electron process that has the potential for, for, for catalysis. So in order to elucidate the mechanism, uh, we started uh, teaming up with Professor uh, Michael Nidek, who's now at Oxford and an expert in, in, uh, in Moscow Irish spectroscopy, to figure out what is the exact iron speciation, is there a radical pathway involved, and, 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 and and, and most importantly, can we make this, this catalytic? Um, luckily for us, the rate limiting step is relatively late, so we can characterize all these species by X-ray crystallography and therefore uh, later on also by Musbauer spectroscopy. So here on the left-hand side, we've already seen the iron dinitrogen complex, but here we can also see the oxidative addition product. In this case, it's aryl bromide, and we also have the diaryl species, which are all stable at room temperature and can be characterized by X-ray, NMR, Mosbauer, squid magnometry. Uh, we have all this, all, all this data. So now we can perform the free squelch studies in order to figure out what is the mechanism. So we have a handle of all these intermediate species. Uh, we also briefly looked whether uh, um, all electron species are involved, such as iron one. Uh, what we saw electrochemically, at least, is that if we start from the aryl bromide oxidative addition product, we can do a one electron reduction electrochemically. This species we can also isolate, which is here, this, uh, this iron one aryl dinitrogen complex. Um, but more surprisingly, we can also uh, do a further reduction to create this anionic uh, uh, um, 
iron uh, arrow by nitrogen species. Uh, we haven't been able to isolate this, this yet, but we think that this is the active species from which oxidative addition uh, occurs. We do know that the iron one is, uh, um, is a site uh, is, is, is a site product of the of the of the reaction, but under the catalytic conditions, this easily oxidizes back up to iron two. So we really think we have an iron zero, iron two um, going on. Um, what is even more interestingly is that um, we can render this 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 process catalytic. So one can take the aryl iodide and the aryl and the and the toluyl grignard, and we can mix them together. Uh, add five more percent of our catalyst in benzene at room temperature. After 24 hours, we have about between 80 and 90 percent cross coupling. Um, in contrast to previous work, we do not have to worry about slow addition of the of the of of, of, of the Grignard or any compatibility issues. It's basically just exactly the same as you would do for 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 palladium chemistry. You mix everything together. You add your iron catalyst, and and and, and you get your cross coupled product. At the moment, we're looking at the substrate scope. Um, and, and we have some very encouraging results that I'm not able to talk about yet. Um, but basically, in terms of mechanism, we think that uh, we use the one here on the on the right hand side, where we start off with our iron dinitrogen. We get oxidative addition of our aryl uh, halide, <clears throat> transmetallation followed by reductive elimination, and um, we're basically final, uh, finalizing now the manuscript uh, where we also disprove this iron one. Uh, Catalysis. So, and I think this is the first, uh, the first example of of an iron zero, iron two uh, catalytic pathway that happens exactly as one would expect in classical organometallic chemistry. Um, however, this is not where the story ends because uh, we also initiated a new project by looking at iron catalyzed alkene metathesis. And, and the reason is is that David Milstein recently uh, published uh, the ring open polymerization. Uh, <clears throat> Of, of uh, catalyzed by, by this iron catalyst, but the, the composition and the mechanism were not, not entirely clear. So we initially started very quickly with a computational evaluation of how our iron catalyst would perform if we would be able to generate a carbene followed, um, if we were able to generate a carbene and which pathway would, 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 would be followed. And, and of course, computationally, what is the most favorable is, is, is the cyclopropanation. But we also identify two other pathways. One is the beta hydride elimination from the metallocyclobutane, and the other one, of course, is the metathesis, which is, although favorable, the highest in energy among all the three pathways. When we did this reaction experimentally, uh, what we found in the reaction mixture uh, as the major product was this LL hydride, uh, which is generated from metallocyclobutane. And at the moment, we have also experimental evidence that we can actually see this species as an intermediate. And of course, we have characterized this L hydride intermediate. And at least I'm not aware of, of iron doing any of this type of chemistry where you have uh, beta hydride elimination from the metallocyte butane, which is well known for, let's say, ruthenium. Besides that, if we have the alkene, uh, if we have the carbene, but we don't feed in the nocturnal uh, alkene, what we observe, and, and this is more uh, speculative, uh, but we do have evidence for that in the NMR, we see alpha hydride abstraction to create unusual iron uh, carbine hydride um, intermediate. Uh, so uh, although this is still mainly a computational evaluation of, 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 our, of, our, of our chemistry, um, we do start seeing uh, uh, experimental validation of, of, our, um, of, the, of, of, the, of our findings that we did we had computationally. So these are some of the products that, that we are working on now. Of course, you know, uh, we established that it is feasible, but we, we still have problems, right? We need to avoid this beta hybrid elimination and alpha hybrid abstraction. Our carbon formation is really sluggish, uh, but we have, we have solutions for that, at least for the beta position. We can block it. If you have a stronger sigma dilating ligand, you will not do uh, alpha hybrid abstraction. And, and, and at the moment, we're playing with the electronics and the electronic structure of the iron catalyst to see how we can favor the metathesis over the beta hydride elimination. So I think there's a lot of you know, promise here, uh, at least to, 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 to facilitate this reaction, which is unknown for, for, for iron. Um, now I want to switch gears a little bit, because besides generating the iron zero, I also showed to you that we create this, this stable transdihydride. This, this transhydride is stable in, in the solid state. We can pull vacuum on it. Um, 
But what we found is if we dissolve this in, in, in deuterated uh, benzene, we saw a disappearance of the, of the, of the, of the hydride at, at minus nine. And, and we think that we, uh, we, we can install deuterium here, which is of interest, of course, because Paul Chirik reported in Science over in Nature not long ago, the isotope exchange mediated by an iron complex. But this, uh, although they propose a distinct uh, dihydrate intermediate, it's not stable, making this reaction not easy to handle. So we thought, okay, perhaps, you know, we can improve upon this system. And indeed we can, if you take 5 more percent in, in, in deuterated benzene, um, we can do uh, HD exchange on, on, on a variety of, of aromatics with a variety of functional groups, uh, whether it's electron donating or withdrawing, it doesn't really matter. Um, it, uh, it occurs quite, uh, quite, uh, quite readily um, with deuteration incorporation you know, in, in the high 90s uh, for most of the for most of the substrates um, mechanistically uh, we did a computational evaluation and it goes via a um, um, basically metal assisted signal ball metathesis um, or, or where we initially we have a, a decoordination of our dihydrogen which is energetically the most uphill then we have the formation of the sigma complex and via the cis effect of this deuterium that is close by, we can basically have a sigma ball metathesis where we now we generate the isotope load of the dihydrogen. And this is able to, to rotate freely uh, around, the, uh, around the dihydrogen bond, basically, and then the whole reaction just goes back in reverse and therefore swapping H4D on the substrate. And this is, of course, all in equilibrium uh, with one another. So the driving force of this reaction is just in the axis of deuterated benzene. And at the moment, we also have established that we can also use uh, deuterium gas to, to drive this reaction. Um, I think with, with, with that, um, I, would, I would end just to, to show a little bit about the chemistry that we have done. We have, of course, done uh, much, uh, much more. Um, so, um, overall, uh, our contributions to earth abundant metal catalysis. Uh, I showed you a little bit about the uh, HD exchange of heteroaromatics from iron dihydride. Um, alkene isomerization, I was not able to talk about, but uh, we can use part per million levels of iron catalyst to facilitate selective um, isomerization of one hexene to two hexenes in a variety of different substrates. Uh, we can also do alkyne functionalization, which is Z-selective in this case. And um, also something we recently published is directed CH bond activation by iron occurring via oxidative addition. We have many more projects. Uh, I would be happy to, to talk about with uh, those interested in, 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 in person. But for now, I think my time is up and, and I really thank you for, um, for your attention. All right. Thank you, Graham, for the very wonderful talk. I think it was a beautiful uh, Ligner design and a very detailed uh, uh, mechanistic uh, uh, starting of the metal complex and leading to a very efficient uh, uh, catalytic uh, reaction. Uh, congratulations, Graham. Thank you so much for uh, keeping it on time and a very beautiful uh, lecture. And hopefully you get a time uh, when uh, uh, you know uh, you can travel to uh, to to China and to Shanghai. We'd be happy to uh, host you in our institute.